Hi guys, Morning Glory here with some exciting news. Just want to say that recently uh, I've invested some of the Patreon money. Oh, there's Commissar Cat Kylo. How's it going? She's just inspecting the uh, the merchandise. Just want to say um, recently invested some of the Patreon money into getting some new terrain and stuff for the channel. This is some of it that's arrived. I've already put together some of it, uh, but I wanted to do a bit of an unveiling on some of the stuff that your Patreon money is going towards. Just so you, uh, you see, just a bit of transparency, really. So before I get into it, I'll say super huge mega thank you to all the Patreon supporters. Without you, the improvements that I've been seeing in the channel just would not have been possible. I mean, in the last it's less less than a year, we've gone from uh, having to do battle reports on a, on my phone with you know terrain that's just you know decades old, you know childhood terrain. To now, we you know this is the second big terrain purchase we've done. Uh, there'll be new battle mats, uh, absolutely everything. We've got a proper camera now for recording, so can't say enough how absolutely unbelievably grateful I am to my um, Patreon supporters. And yeah, a little, little bit of a teaser here as well. Before we get into the, the terrain that I've bought, I want to say that, um, you yeah, know, obviously I've been re you know, really grateful for the support for the Patreons, but now it's, you know, soon it's going to be time for me to start, you know, giving back to my Patreon supporters as well. So, I'm definitely I'm looking into you know giveaways and other things that I can do to show my uh, my appreciation and my support for for all the support that's been given to me. So you know, and if you are interested in um, you know shameless plug, if you are interested in uh, supporting me on Patreon, just just check out any of my video descriptions that you know in the last sort of few months. Um, yeah, it is even if it's just a dollar, it's absolutely fantastic, and I am still blown away by the amount of support that I have received. Uh, humbled is the word. But anyway, without getting all gushy and mushy and going overboard on it, let's take a look at what has been uh, what's been bought recently. So this is the first package that I want to look into. It's um, it's a big load. Well, you, see, I haven't seen it yet, but it's it's a big load of um, MDF Necromunda style terrain. Um, so. I was looking for ages for some terrain that would go with this blue mat, and I've been, you know, I was trying to sort of recreate, um, you know, get some pre get some pre-painted resin terrain like I've like I've got in the past, um, but it's um, it didn't doesn't quite go. Obviously, this is a blue mat, and the terrain that you know I got from Game at EU was was brown, um, so it doesn't quite. If it looks okay, it doesn't quite fit. So I thought, why why try and shoehorn something in? Let's um, you know, let's actually make, you know, let's, let's get some terrain that's unpainted and actually put a bit of effort in, a bit of hobby in, and that way we can make it look like the way we want it to look. So, yeah, let's uh, rip this package open and see what's inside. Two bags for extra protection, the Commissar approves. And bubble wrap, even more protection. This is the power armor equivalent of packaging. I thought we got to the wood, but no, there is yet more protection. This is clearly Terminator armor. And here we have the final thing. Just throw away all this crap. Let the cat play with it, and let's see what's inside. So here we have the final thing. So loads and loads of MDF. It looks absolutely fantastic. I'm uh, can't believe how, considering all the the packaging there was, I can't believe quite how much terrain there actually is inside this thing. So I will be doing a follow-up video to this, guys. Ooh, lots of little wooden bits. I think these are just bits that poke out, so I'm not too worried about it. Hopefully, I'm not. <laughs> hopefully, I'm not scattering half the terrain that I've bought to the winds. There we go. Even more terrain. So basically, what this is, guys, is um, Jesus, Jesus. I see terrain. Jesus, that's a lot of terrain. I actually can't. I don't think I'm gonna have room to spread all this out. I mean, look. This is absolutely fantastic. Oh, it did. I'm not gonna lie, guys. It wasn't exactly. Let's just shove that over there. It wasn't exactly cheap. I know it's only MDF, but it's looking very, very high quality. And it was the last one the guy had. So there we go. I think I'm pretty lucky to get hold of it. So, but what it's gonna look like, guys? So it's literally. It's like big um, platforms and pillars. So you can see here. These are like the main platforms, and these are the connecting bits here and here, and these are the the pillars. Like so, you, there's multiple multiple levels. So I'm not going to be able to spread all this out. I think there's so much of it. We're going to have like two layers. 
Absolutely insanity. It's half, I reckon half a tree has gone into this. One of the Emperor's blessed trees. So here's a go. Here's like a proper, a proper platformy bit there. It's going to be very interesting. So absolutely friggin' loads. Look at that. It's almost going to be a shame to paint over it. The, the burned wood looks so, so good. Does it smell nice? Mmm, you can smell the burnt wood. Awesome. So there you go. Look at that. Absolutely loads of it. And then, there you go. This is what it's going to look like. When we have put it all together, I'll be doing a follow-up video, but you can see there's absolutely loads. So there's one, two, three main uh, pillars, two minor pillars, well, three minor pillars, gantries for days, levels for days, multiple levels. You know, you've got, at least it's, there's some instructions here. I think I would I would honestly struggle to put it all together. But look, you can see this. So if any of you have seen my old, my old um, paper ne cardboard neck train, this is very reminiscent of that. Um, now the problem I've had in the past, I want to say, it's a bit of spiel as to uh, as to why we do it, why why I've gone for this terrain. So the terrain I've chosen uh, in the past from Game at EU, pre-painted, very high quality, very easy, straight out the box. But and I've noticed it's kind of an issue with a lot of their terrain, um, very flat. And what do I mean by that? Well, there's not multiple levels to battle on. There is just ground level but there's no you know there's no uh heights now obviously um you know firing down on top of someone doesn't really make a difference in 40k but in terms of line of sight it's very very important um and using this sort of terrain in conjunction with the large line of sight blocking terrain that game at eu has well, this isn't game at eu terrain obviously uh, but the current terrain i have is very line of sight blocking the point of this terrain is to be used alongside that um, which will help blend that, this is going to all be painted to match with this, um, but also match the other uh, battle mats I have. But the this will allow, this will add an extra layer of tactical depth. Because not only will we have line of sight blocking terrain, but if you use the terrain like this, this multiple level tall terrain, you can use that to your advantage to see over line of sight blocking terrain. And it actually adds another level of depth. Um, and a really good example of this is, you know, of how how simple it is, is when me and uh, Johnny use the net commander terrain, or in any of my battle pots, I use the net commander terrain. Just having that ability to go up just just three inches um, does make a huge difference in terms of looking over things. I've actually got a battle report coming up. It's probably going to get posted this week. Um, not going to give anything away, but the difference we use the uh, the, the old net commander terrain and the gamemat.eu terrain together. And it was so, it was really, really, really good. Um, and this is going to be even better. So anyway, that's the first lot. That's what I said. This is what it's going to end up looking like. Lots and lots of gantries and stuff. Let's see what else we have. So not quite as much packaging in these ones. But uh, to be honest, I think the last one was well, well overpacked. But it was very safe. Uh, so let's take a look at what's inside these ones. Commissar Cat Kylo will be inspecting the proceedings. Absolutely loads of terrain here. Only thing is, is maybe uh, it's uh, it's all falling out of the little of the little sprue, so I don't really want to take it all out. But as you can see, guys, there's absolutely layers and layers and layers of this stuff. Um, this is from a different uh, <laughs> this is from a different uh, seller, and um, basically, it's um, what this will allow me to make is a couple of. Uh, sort of prefabricated buildings. Same for this stuff. Although uh, this one also has a, a landing pad, which I thought looked quite good. So um, loads and loads of terrain available. As you can see, all MDF layers and layers. I've probably got about 40. I mean, if you just try and do this one-handed, show you guys there, you can just see how many individual layers there are of just terrain upon terrain upon terrain. So absolutely very, very deceptively, you know, small package. When I, when I first... Uh, uh, picked these up from the collection place. I thought, ooh, I thought I'd ordered a bit more than this, you know, especially for the for the for the money that I put down for it. Um, I thought, you know, I didn't want you guys to be disappointed. But uh, as it turned out, actually, it's just very, very, very efficiently packed. I mean, it's just thin layers of MDF, and that means you can cram absolutely loads of it into a, re a relatively small space. So yeah, like I said, I don't want to pull all this out now, only because um, 
it's sort of falling apart. So I don't want to lose any bits of it, especially with the uh, with the cat running around. So I'll probably pick a little bit up and run off with it in the mouth, and I'll never be able to complete some of the sets. So let's take a look at the final stuff that I bought. So here we have the last thing that I bought, a big old bag of goodies from Games Workshop. So let's just get all this out. There we go. Loads and loads of painting supplies. So, got myself a can of Mechanicus Standard Grey. Got myself a can of Citadel Lead Belcher. I've already had a little play around with this one. I like it. I like it a lot. Got myself some more fine brown, some Astro Granite texture paint, some Riser Rust. So, um, Administratum Grey, some Longbeard Grey, and some Lamia Medium because I'm always needing that because my paints are always drying out. No comment on the Games Workshop pot design. Anyway, big old brush, little brush. So, basically, I decided what I want to do is I want to have some concrete buildings. And I want to have some uh, dirty metal gantries. And so uh, what I decided I wanted to do is I wanted to do the Nakamunda terrain. Um, the stuff that I bought here, I want to do that in Lead Belcher. Okay. Because Lead Belcher is already a really, it's not like um, Iron Break, which is a very clean, a very bright metal. I like to use that on a lot of my... Um, miniatures because it makes it makes them pop a little bit because you have you know especially with black templars you've got a, the majority of the model is is black and yes you've got the white shoulder pads but what but you know black and white is, is literally a very it's very base medium whereas having a bit of uh, you know really bright silver on there makes them look like gleaming weapons so that's why I like uh, normally like using iron breaker but for this we're going for dirty old metal we're going for a hive city hive like terrain so lead belcher dirty metal absolutely fantastic going with that is riser rust now i've already tried this out on some of my steel legion bases so those of you that want an idea of what lead belch looks like go and look at some of my battle reports with my steel legion in them because all the bases for those guys were done in lead belcher okay without any washes just pure lead belcher and you can just see straight away it is bright but even without a wash it's definitely a dirtier color than um than uh, Iron Breaker, but I want it to not just be plain metal all over the place, so I've got myself some riser rust. And the point of that is to literally, um, I'm going to be slapping, no, I'm going to be careful with it, but I am going to be fairly liberal with the riser rust, rust. And just I want this whole, all these gantries, all these prefabricated buildings, all these cargo containers and stuff, I want it to look dirty metal, rusty classic sort of not just high city but sort of industrial look that's the look we're going for here now obviously not all of the terrain is going to be metal i have this is not all the terrain that i've got by the way guys i've got a load of sort of ruined buildings as well again mdf and he's putting together um but i thought that they wanted to to have it all matched together that they would be like concrete ruined concrete buildings so Mechanicus Standard Grey, not yet broken this out, absolute fresh tin. So, they're going to be, most of those other ruined buildings are going to be spray painted Mechanicus Standard Grey. They're also going to have, going to be highlighted with some of this Administratum Grey and dry brush with some of this Longbeard Grey as well. Basically, just so it, again, it's not just flat Mechanicus grey all over the place really want the terrain to become part of the battlefield um, also got myself some astro granite this is a really good textured paint and i think it's going to look this is this is going to be used quite a lot on the revamped mordians which is you know one of the projects i'm very keen to get on top of at the moment my mordians are all on like grass bases and um to just send different, you know, just doesn't look doesn't look right. I, I am probably going to be redoing my modules sooner than expected just because I've got the bug and want to do them. Uh, and I thought textured bases would be absolutely fantastic using this stuff. And if we think about it, this is the stuff that this is just the gritty paint. It's not the one that cracks and flakes. Purposely gone for that one because I basically want to. I want it to to be textured, but I don't want it to be out of place. 
So the, the thinking is, is that Mordians, they're going to be fighting. A lot of the maps that I have are, in, a lot of the mats and the uh, terrain that I have is industrial. The Mordians are going to be fighting in these industrial areas. They are going to have sort of be fighting in sort of urban concrete metal areas. So going for that sort of basically um, tarmac -y, not really tarmac, but sort of uh, concrete-y sort of base. I think that's going to look really, really good. Um... That's it basically guys. Mornfine Brown is also there because Rise of Rust is quite bright, but the Games Workshop guy told me a technique where you can uh, water this stuff down to just unbelievable levels. Basically it's almost like a bit of water with some Mornfine Brown in it. You just slap that all over the place and it makes the metal look really rusty. So I'm going to try that with that. And the Lamy Medium, like I said, can no go, go wrong with Lamy Medium. Big old brush because I'm going to be painting lots of terrain, so I thought it'd be a good idea to get a medium senior brush. Just going to be slapping that stuff all over the place, and again, just for some of the, it's it's a big brush, it's a medium base. I'm used to using fine detail brushes, but this is going to be the fine detail on the uh, on the terrain. So there we go, guys. Big old box of goodies from uh, Gaze Workshop. Absolutely boatloads of terrain. Not sure, what, not, I'm not sure when I'm going to get all this done, but I want to get it done in the next few weeks, and then we're going to have lots and lots of really cool battle reports to show you guys. So, once again, thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I uh, hope this gives you a bit of confidence that I am using your money wisely to support the channel. A bit of transparency. And, of course, I hope you all look forward to seeing some of this new terrain in action and the battle report that will be coming up later this week. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.